Warning, some of the photos in this video are extremely disturbing. The Story of Jeffrey Dahmer Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer was born May 21, 1960 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He was the first of two sons of his mother Joyce and his father Lionel. It is said that as an infant, Dahmer was deprived of attention. Others claim that he was doted upon as an infant and toddler by both his parents. His mother was known to be tense and greedy for attention, very pity and argumentative with her husband and neighbors. When Dahmer entered the first grade, Joyce spent a lot of time in bed recovering from weakness. Lionel's university studies kept him away from home most of the time. When he was home, his wife, a hypochondriac who suffered from depression, demanded constant attention. She was said to work herself into a state of anxiety over trivial matters simply to appease her husband. Joyce once even attempted suicide. Neither parents devoted much time to Jeffrey. In grade school, Dahmer was known to have a small number of friends. From an early age, Dahmer was interested in dead animals. He collected large insects in jars like butterflies and dragonflies. He then started collecting animal carcasses from the side of the road. He dismembered these animals at home or in the woods. And according to one of Dahmer's friends, he dismembered these animals and stored the parts in jars in the tool shed. He said he was curious as how animals, I quote, fitted together. There was one instance he decapitated the carcass of a dog before nailing the body to a tree and impelling the skull on a stake beside a wooden cross in the woods near home. It is believed that his fascination with dead animals may have started at age four when he saw his dad removing animal bones from under the house. Lionel said that Jeffrey was very thrilled in an odd way by the sound the bones made and become preoccupied with the bones. He would search for more bones and he would even explore live animals to see where the bones were located in their body. In October 1966, the family moved to Ohio. When Joyce gave birth in December, Jeffrey was allowed to name the baby and chose the name David. That same year, Lionel earned his degree and started working as an analytical chemist in nearby Ohio. In 1968, the family moved to another town in Ohio. Two years later, during a chicken dinner, Dahmer asked Lionel what would happen if chicken bones were placed in bleach. Lionel, pleased by Dahmer's curiosity, demonstrated how to bleach and preserve animal bones. Dahmer started incorporating these techniques into his bone collection. In high school, Dahmer was looked at as an outcast. At age 14, he started drinking beer and alcohol. He would tell students it was, and I quote, his medicine. However, staff considered Dahmer to be polite and intelligent, but with average grades. Dahmer played tennis and briefly played in the school band. When Dahmer reached puberty, he discovered he was gay. He did not tell his parents and had a brief relationship with another teen boy. However, they never had any sexual encounters. Dahmer admitted that he began fantasizing about dominating and controlling a completely submissive male partner. These fantasies became intertwined with dissection. When Dahmer was about 16, he conceived a fantasy of rendering unconscious a particular male jogger he found attractive and then making sexual use of his body. On one occasion, Dahmer concealed himself in bushes with a baseball bat to lay in wait for this man. However, he did not pass by on that day.
Dahmer admitted that that was his first attempt to attack someone. Even though Dahmer was considered to be a loner at school, he became a class clown who often staged pranks, which became known as doing a Dahmer. By 1977, his grades had declined. His parents hired a private tutor with little success. And that same year, his parents attended marriage counseling. The couple started fighting a lot when Lionel found out that Joyce had a brief affair in September 1977. They both decided to divorce. Lionel moved out in early 1978. Joyce and David moved out of the family home to live with relatives, and Dahmer just turned 18 and remained at home. Dahmer's parents' divorce was finalized July 24, 1978, and Joyce was awarded custody of Jeffrey's younger brother, David, and alimony payments. Dahmer committed his first murder in 1978, three weeks after graduation. At the time, he was living alone at the family home. On June 18th, Dahmer picked up a hitchhiker named Stephen Hicks, who was almost 19. Dahmer lured the teen to his house while drinking alcohol together. Hicks, who had been hitchhiking to a rock concert, agreed to go with Dahmer to his house. According to Dahmer, after several hours of drinking and listening to music, Hicks, and I quote, wanted to leave and I didn't want him to. In response, Dahmer hit him twice with a 10-pound dumbbell from behind while Hicks sat on a chair. When Hicks fell unconscious, Dahmer strangled him to death with the bar of the dumbbell, then stripped the clothes from his body before masturbating as he stood above the corpse. The next day, Dahmer dissected Hicks's body in his basement. He later buried the remains in a shallow grave in his backyard. Then several weeks later, unburying the remains and peeling the flesh from the bones, he dissolved the flesh in acid before flushing the solution down the toilet. He crushed the bones with a sledgehammer and scattered them in the woods behind the home. Six weeks after the murder of Hicks, Dahmer's father and his fiance returned home where they discovered Jeffrey living alone at the house. That August, Dahmer enrolled at Ohio State University. Hoping to major in business, Dahmer was very unproductive at school, and it was due to his heavy alcohol use. He received failing grades in Intro to Anthropology, Classical Civilization, and Administrative Science. The only course Dahmer was successful at was Riflery having received a B grade. His overall GPA was 4.0. Lionel paid a surprise visit to Dahmer to find his room covered in empty liquor bottles. Lionel paid in advance for Dahmer's second term of school, but Dahmer dropped out after just three months. January 1979, Dahmer enlisted in the U.S. Army and trained as a medical specialist at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas. On July 13, 1979, he was stationed in Baumholder, West Germany, and served as a combat medic in 2nd Battalion, 68th Armored Regiment, 8th Infantry Division. In one report, Dahmer was said to be an average to above average soldier. Two soldiers, however, attest to have been being raped by Dahmer while in the army. One stated that Dahmer reportedly raped him over a 17-month period while in Baumholder, while another soldier believed that Dahmer drugged and raped him inside an armored personnel carrier in 1979. Due to alcohol use, Dahmer was deemed unstable for military service and was discharged he did receive an honorable discharge. March 24, 1981, Dahmer was sent to Fort Jackson, South Carolina for debriefing. Dahmer later told police he felt he could not return home to face his dad, so he opted to travel to Miami Beach, Florida. Dahmer found employment there and rented a motel room. 
Dahmer spent most of his money on alcohol, however, and got evicted. He worked at a sandwich shop later and spent most of his time on the beach, then asked his dad if he could move back to the family home in Ohio in September of the same year. After returning to Ohio, Dahmer stayed with his dad and stepmom. He continued to drink very heavily. Two weeks after his return, Dahmer was arrested for drunk and disorderly conduct and fined $60 and given a suspended 10-day jail sentence. In 1981, Dahmer was sent to live with his grandmother in West Allis, Wisconsin. Dahmer was very good at his grandmother's, despite drinking and smoking. In 1982, he found a job as a phlebotomist at Milwaukee Blood Plasma Center. He worked there for 10 months and then got laid off. Dahmer was then jobless for nearly two years, living off the money that his grandmother gave him. Before losing that job, Dahmer was arrested for indecent exposure. August 7, 1982, at a Wisconsin State Fair, he was observed exposing himself to 25 women and children. He was convicted and fined $50 plus court cost. January 1985, Dahmer was hired as a mixer at a chocolate factory, where he worked 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., six nights a week with Saturday evening off. An incident occurred where Dahmer was propositioned by another man. The stranger threw Dahmer a note offering to perform fellatio upon him. Dahmer did not respond, but the incident was in his mind stirring. He fantasized of control and dominance. Dahmer began to go to Milwaukee gay bars, gay bathhouses, and bookstores. He was said to have stolen a mannequin from a store, which he briefly used for sexual stimulation. His grandmother found it and told him to discard of it. During sexual encounters, Dahmer became very frustrated at his partners for moving during sexual acts. Following his arrest, he stated, I trained myself to view people as objects of pleasure instead of people. For this reason, in June 1986, he started giving partners sleeping pills, liquor laced with sedatives, then raping their unconscious bodies. After about 12 instances, the bathhouses revoked Dahmer's membership. But Dahmer used hotel rooms to continue this. Dahmer read the report about the funeral of an 18-year-old male. He decided he wanted to steal the corpse and take it home. Dahmer attempted to dig up the boy, but he claimed the soil was too hard and gave up. August 1986, Dahmer was arrested for masturbating in front of two 12-year-old boys as he stood across a river. He initially admitted the offense and again was charged with indecent exposure. He later changed his story, stating that he was urinating and was unaware there was witnesses. And the charge was changed to disorderly conduct. And on March 10, 1987, Dahmer was sentenced to one year probation. Dahmer was also to attend counseling. On November 20, 1987, Dahmer, residing with his grandmother, encountered a 25-year-old man. His name was Stephen Tuwami, and they met at a bar, and Dahmer persuaded him to return to the Ambassador Hotel in Milwaukee, where Dahmer rented a room for the evening. According to Dahmer, he had no intentions of killing Tuwami, but he did intend to drug and rape him. However, Dahmer awoke the next day to Tuwami laying beneath him on the bed, his chest crushed in and black and blue with bruises. Blood was seeping from his mouth and Dahmer's fist and forearms were bruised. Dahmer stated he had no memory of this and said, I quote, I cannot believe this happened. To dispose of the body, Dahmer bought a large suitcase and transported the body to his grandma's. One week later, he severed the head, arms, and legs from the torso then filleted the bones from the body before cutting the flesh into pieces small enough to handle. He then placed the flesh inside plastic 
garbage bags. He wrapped the bones inside a sheet and pounded them into splinters with a sledgehammer. This took Dahmer around two hours in total. He disposed of the remains, excluding the severed head. He threw everything inside the trash can. For two weeks, Dahmer kept the victim's head wrapped in a blanket. After two weeks, he boiled the head in a mixture of soil eggs and bleach, an effort to retain the skull, which he then used for a stimulus for masturbation. Eventually, the skull was too brittle by bleaching, so Dahmer pulverized and disposed of it. After the murder of Tuami, Dahmer began to actively seek victims, most of who he encountered in or by gay bars. Two months after Tuami was killed, Dahmer encountered a 14-year-old Native American male prostitute named James Dax Tater. Dahmer lured him to his home by offering him $50 to pose for nude photos. At Dahmer's West Dallas residence, the pair engaged in sexual acts before Dahmer drugged and strangled him on the floor of the cellar. Dahmer left the body in the cellar for one week before dismembering it in his usual manner. He put the remains in the trash excluding the skull and then boiled the skull and retained it before pulverizing it. On March 24, 1988, Dahmer met a 22-year-old bisexual man named Richard Guerrero outside a gay bar called The Phoenix. Dahmer lured this man to his grandmother's by offering him $50 to spend the night with him. He then drugged and strangled him before performing oral sex upon the corpse. Dahmer dismembered his body within 24 hours of the murder and followed the same exact methods as the last murders. On April 23rd, Dahmer lured another young man to his home. However, after giving the victim a drug coffee, both him and the victim heard the grandmother call out, Is that you, Jeff? Although Dahmer replied in a manner that led his grandmother to believe that he was alone, she did observe that he was not alone. Because of this, Dahmer opted not to kill this victim. Instead, he took him to the hospital once he was unconscious. September 1988, the grandmother asked Dahmer to move out because of all the men he brought home and the foul-smelling odors coming from the basement and garage. Dahmer found a one-bedroom apartment on North 25th Street and moved into his new place on September 25th. Dahmer was arrested the next day for drugging and sexually fondling a 13-year-old boy whom he had lured to his home to pose for nude photos. January 1989, Dahmer was convicted of second-degree sexual assault and of enticing a child for immoral purposes. Sentencing was suspended until May 1989. On March 20th, Dahmer commenced a 10-day Easter absence from which, during, he moved back to his grandmother's. Two months after his conviction and two months prior to his sentencing for the sexual assault, Dahmer murdered his fifth victim. He was a mixed-race 24-year-old aspiring model named Anthony Sears, whom Dahmer met at a gay bar on March 25th, 1989. According to Dahmer, on this day, he was not looking to commit a crime. However, shortly before closing time, Sears just started talking to me, Dahmer stated. Dahmer lured Sears to the grandmother's home. The pair engaged in oral sex, and then Dahmer drugged and strangled him. The following morning, Dahmer put the corpse in the grandmother's bathtub, where he decapitated the body before attempting to flay the corpse. He stripped the flesh from the body and pulverized the bones and disposed them in the trash. Dahmer said he found Sears, and I quote, exceptionally attractive. And Sears was the first victim who he permanently retained any body parts. He preserved Sears' head and genitalia in acetone and stored them in his work locker. And when he moved the following year, he took the remains with him. 
On May 23, 1989, Dahmer was sentenced to five years probation and one year in the House of Corrections with a work release permit so that he could keep his job. He also had to register as a sex offender. Two months before his scheduled release from the work camp, he was paroled from his regime, and his five years of probation began at this point. Dahmer temporarily moved back to his grandmother's before moving in May 1990. He then moved into Oxford Apartments located on North 25th in Milwaukee. Within one week of moving into his apartments, Dahmer killed his sixth victim, Raymond Smith, who was a 32-year-old male prostitute, who Dahmer lured to his apartments with the promise of $50 for sex. He gave Smith a drink with seven sleeping pills in it and manually strangled him. The next day, Dahmer bought a Polaroid camera and took several pictures of Smith's body in suggestive positions before dismembering him in the bathroom. He boiled the legs, arms, and pelvis in a still kettle with soil legs, which allowed him to then rinse the bones in the sink. He dissolved the remainder of the smith's skeleton, excluding the skull, in a container filled with acid. He later spray-painted smith's skull, which he placed beside Sears upon a black towel inside a metal filing cabinet. One week after the murder of Smith, around May 27th, Dahmer lured another young man to his apartment. On this particular day, Dahmer accidentally consumed the drug drink himself. When he woke up, he discovered his guest had stolen $300, a watch, and some clothing from him. Dahmer did not report this to police, although he told his probation officer. June 1990, Dahmer lured 27-year-old Edward Smith to his apartment. He drug and strangled Smith and placed the skeleton in the freezer for several months in hopes that it would not retain moisture. Freezing it did not remove moisture, and the skeleton was acidified months later. Dahmer accidentally destroyed the skull when he put it in the oven to dry. It exploded. Dahmer later tells police that he felt, and I quote, rotten, about being unable to retain any of the body parts. Less than three months after Smith's murder, Dahmer encountered a 22-year-old Chicago native named Ernest Miller on the corner of North 27th Street. Miller agreed to go to the apartments for $50 and further agreed to let Dahmer listen to his stomach and heart. When Dahmer attempted oral sex on Miller, he was told, and I quote, that will cost you extra, and Dahmer gave him a drink with sleeping pills. Because of only having two pills, Dahmer killed Miller by slashing his carotid artery with a knife that he used to dissect his victims. Dahmer then posed the body and took pictures before placing the body in the tub for dismemberment. Dahmer kissed and talked to the severed head while dismembering the body. Dahmer wrapped the heart, biceps, and portions of the leg flesh in plastic bags and put it in the fridge for later consumption. He boiled the remaining flesh and organs into a jelly-like substance using soil eggs, and then rinsed the flesh off the skeleton. Dahmer placed bones in the light bleach solution for 24 hours before allowing them to dry on a cloth for one week. The severed head was initially placed in the fridge before being stripped of the flesh, then painted and coated with enamel. Three weeks later, on September 24th, Dahmer encountered a 22-year-old man named David Thomas at the Grand Avenue Mall. He persuaded him to return to his apartment for drinks and offered extra money if he posed for the pictures. After drugging Thomas, Dahmer stated that he was not attracted to him, but strangled and killed him anyways in case he woke up mad about being drugged. Dahmer dismembered the body, but didn't retain any of the body parts whatsoever. He took pictures of the dismemberment process and retained the pictures which later aided in Thomas's identification. Dahmer went five months without killing anyone after Thomas.
Although between October 1990 and February 1991, he unsuccessfully attempted to lure men to his apartment. He also regularly complained of feeling of having anxiety and depression to his probation officer throughout 1990, with frequent references to his sexuality, and admitted to having suicidal thoughts. February 1991, Dahmer observed a 17-year-old Curtis Strotter at a bus stop. He lured Curtis in by offering him money to pose for nude photos, with added incentive of sexual intercourse. Dahmer drugged and strangled him, and then dismembered him, and retained his skull, hands, and genitals, and photoed each state of dismemberment process. Less than two months later, April 7th, Dahmer encountered a 19-year-old Errol Lindsay, walking. Lindsay was heterosexual and Dahmer lured him to the apartments, drugged him, and drilled a hole into his skull and poured hydrochloric acid into it. According to Dahmer, Lindsay awoke after this experiment, saying, and I quote, I have a headache, what time is it? Dahmer again drugged Lindsay, then strangled him and decapitated him and retained his skull. He then flayed Lindsay's body, placing the skin in a solution of cold water and salt for several weeks in hopes of permanently retaining it. It became too brittle, so he threw it away. By 1991, residents of the apartment started complaining of foul smell in the building. They also complained that there was objects always falling and the sounds of a chainsaw going off. They contacted the building manager, Mr. Princewell, and Mr. Princewell contacted Dahmer. Dahmer dismissed the smell as his fridge broke and food was spoiling or his tropical fish was dying. On May 26, 1991, Dahmer encountered a 14-year-old teen named Connor Rack sent us some phone on Wisconsin Avenue. This happened to be the younger brother of the boy Dahmer molested in 1988. Dahmer offered money to pose for Polaroid pictures. The boy almost refused before deciding to go. He went to Dahmer's apartment and posed for two pictures in underwear before being drugged, and then Dahmer performed oral sex on him. Dahmer drilled a single hole into the boy's skull through which he injected hydrochloric acid into the frontal lobe. Before the boy fell unconscious, Dahmer led the boy into the bedroom where the body of 31-year-old Tony Hughes lay on the floor, whom he killed three days earlier. Dahmer said that he believed the kid seen the body but did not react, due to being drugged, and the hole in his head. The boy soon fell unconscious. Dahmer laid by the unconscious body and drank before leaving to drink at a bar. That morning, when Dahmer returned home on May 27th, he seen that the boy was awake and sitting outside naked on the corner of 25th Street with three distressed women. Dahmer claimed that the boy was a friend and went to lead him back to his apartment, and the women said that they had called 911. Two police officers arrived. Dahmer kept very calm and said that the boy was his 19-year-old lover that always acted this way when he got drunk. One lady tried to tell the cop that the boy was bleeding from his head and his buttocks, but the cop told her, and I quote, to shut up and butt out. She also tried mentioning that he struggled to go to the apartment with Dahmer. The cops wrapped the boy in the towel and walked him to Dahmer's apartment. They noticed the bad smell, but they didn't do anything. They just peeked their head around the corner of the bedroom, looked around a little bit, and then left. Dahmer again injected a lethal amount of hydrochloric acid into the boy's brain. The next day, May 28th, Dahmer took a day's leave from work to devote himself to the dismemberment of the young boy and Mr. Hughes. He retained both victims' skulls. On June 30th, Dahmer traveled to Chicago where he encountered a 20-year-old Matt Turner at a bus station. Turner accepted Dahmer's offer to travel to Milwaukee for a professional photo shoot. 
Dahmer drugged, strangled, and dismembered Turner at the apartments. He placed his head in internal organs in separate plastic bags and put them in the freezer. Five days later, on July 5th, Dahmer lured a 23-year-old, Jeremiah Weinberger, from Chicago Bar to his apartments on the promise of spending the weekend with him. He drugged the man and twice injected boiling water through his skull, sending him into a coma and he died two days later. On July 15th, Dahmer encountered a 24-year-old Oliver Lacey at the corner of 27th and Kilbourne. Lacey agreed to pose for nude photos. They engaged in sexual activity before Dahmer drugged Lacey. After strangling Lacey, Dahmer had sex with the corpse and then dismembered him. He put the head and the heart in the fridge and the skeleton in the freezer. Four days later, Dahmer was fired from his work for requesting too many days off. Dahmer also lured a 25-year-old Joseph Brodhoff to his apartment. He was strangled and left lying on Dahmer's bed covered with a sheet for two days. On July 21st, Dahmer removed the sheet and the head was covered in maggots. He decapitated and cleaned the head and put it in the fridge. He later acidified the torso along with those of the two other victims killed within the previous month. On July 22, 1991, Dahmer approached three men with $100 to come pose nude for photos, drink beer, and hang out. One of the 32-year-olds, Tracy Edwards, agreed. Upon entering the apartments, Edwards noted a foul odor and boxes of hydrochloric acid on the floor, which Dahmer claimed to be used for cleaning bricks. After some conversation, Edwards responded to Dahmer's request to turn his head and look at the tropical fish, and then Dahmer placed handcuffs upon his wrist. Edwards asked, and I quote, What is happening? Dahmer unsuccessfully attempted to cuff his two wrists together and then told Edwards to come to the bedroom. To pose nude for pictures. While in the room, Edwards noted nude male posters on the wall. He also noted that there was a videotape of The Exorcist II playing. He noted a blue 50-gallon drum in the corner from which there was a strong odor emitting from. Dahmer then waved around a knife and informed Edwards he intended to take nude f pictures of him. In an attempt to calm Dahmer down, Edwards unbuttoned his shirt, saying he would allow him to do so if he removed the knife and the cuffs. Dahmer simply turned his attention to the TV, though. Edwards observed Dahmer rocking back and forth and Channing before turning his attention back to him. He placed his head on Edward's chest, listened to his heartbeat, and with the knife pressed it against Edward's and informed Edward's he intended to eat his heart. In attempt to prevent Dahmer from attacking him, Edward's repeated that he was Dahmer's friend and that he was not going to run away. Edwards decided that he was going to jump from the window or run through the front door in the next opportunity available. When Edwards next stated that he had to use the bathroom, he asked if they could sit with the beer in the living room where there was air conditioner. Dahmer consented and the pair walked into the living room. When Edwards exited the bathroom, inside the living room, Edwards waited until he observed Dahmer have a momentary lapse of concentration before requesting to use the bathroom again. When Edwards rose from the couch, he noted Dahmer was not holding the handcuffs, whereupon Edwards punched him in the face, knocking Dahmer off balance, and ran out the front door. At 11.30 p.m. on July 22nd, Edwards flags down two police officers, Robert Roth and Rolf Mueller, at the corner of North 25th Street, Officers noted the handcuffs on Edward's wrist, whereupon Edwards said, A freak put them on him, and asked if they could remove them. The officer's keys failed to remove the cuffs. Edwards then led the police to Dahmer's, where he stated he finally escaped after five hours.
Dahmer invited the three inside and had an explanation to why he handcuffed Edwards. And Edwards explained how Dahmer used a knife upon him. Dahmer said nothing besides, and I quote, the key to the handcuffs are in my bedside dresser. As Mueller entered the bedroom, Dahmer attempted to pass Mueller and retrieve the key. That's when the second officer told him to back off. In the room, Mueller noted a large knife beneath the bed. He also saw an open drawer that contained Polaroids of bodies in various stages of dismemberment. Mueller walked to his partner and showed him, saying, and I quote, These are real. When Dahmer seen that they had his pictures, he fought and resisted arrest, which he was overpowered and two more patrol cars were called. At this point, Mueller opened the fridge to reveal a freshly severed head of a black male on the bottom shelf. Dahmer looked at the officer and said, and I quote, For what I did, I should be dead. A more detailed search of the apartment revealed a total of four severed heads in Dahmer's kitchen, seven skulls, some painted and some bleached, in the bedroom inside a closet. At the bottom of the fridge, there were blood drippings, plus two human hearts and a portion of an arm muscle, each wrapped inside plastic bags upon the shelves. There was an entire torso in the freezer, plus a bag of human organs and flesh stuck to ice at the bottom. They also found two entire skeletons, a pair of severed hands, two severed penises, a mummified scalp, and, in the 57-gallon drum, three other torsos, dissolving in acid. There was a total of 74 Polaroid pictures detailing the dismemberment of the victims. Chief Medical Examiner said, and I quote, It was more like dismantling someone's museum than an actual crime scene. Dahmer admitted to the murder of 16 young men in Wisconsin since 1987, with one further victim, Stephen Hicks, killed in Ohio back in 1978. Most of Dahmer's victims had been rendered unconscious prior to their murder, although some had died as a result of having acid or boiling water injected into their brain. As he had no memory of the murder of Tuami, he was unsure whether he was unconscious when beaten to death, although he said he was wondering if it was possible that him viewing the exposed chest of his victim while in a drunken stupor may have led him to unsuccessfully attempt to tear his victim's heart from his chest. Almost all of the murders committed after moving into the Oxford apartments had involved a ritual of posing the victims' bodies in suggestive positions, typically with the chest thrust outwards prior to dismemberment. Dahmer readily admitted to engaging in necrophilia and performing sexual acts with the organs. He dismembered their bodies in his tub he said that the blood would pull in the chest. Dahmer first removed the organs, then suspended the torso so that the blood would drain in the tub. Before dicing any organs he did not wish to retain, he would pare the flesh from the body. The bones he wished to dispose of were pulverized and acidified. With Soilex and bleach solutions, he used to aid in the preservation of skeletons and skulls he wished to keep. In addition, Dahmer confessed to having consumed the hearts, livers, biceps, and portions of the thighs of several victims killed within the past year. Dahmer stated that he had been in the process of constructing a private altar of victims' skulls, which he had intended to display on the black table located in his living room, and upon which he had photographed the bodies of many of his victims. This display of skulls was to be adorned at each side with the complete skeletons of Miller and Lacey. The four severed heads were to be removed of all flesh and used in the altar, as was the skull of at least one future victim. 
Incense sticks were to be placed at each end of the table, above which Dahmer intended to place a large blue lamp with extending blue globe lights. The entire construction was to be placed before a window covered with a black opaque shower curtain, in front of which Dahmer intended to sit in a black leather chair. When asked who the altar was dedicated to, he said, and I quote, myself, it was a place where I could feel at home, and I intended it as a place of meditation. From where he believed he could draw a sense of power. Adding, if this, meaning his arrest, had happened six months later, that that's what they would have found. On July 25th, 1991, Dahmer was charged with four counts of first degree murder. By August 22nd, he had been charged with a further 11 murders committed in Wisconsin. On September 14th, investigators in Ohio, having uncovered hundreds of bone fragments in the woods behind Dahmer's old home, formally identified two molars and vertebrae with x-ray records of Hicks. Three days later, Dahmer was charged by authorities in Ohio with Hicks murder. Dahmer was not charged with the attempted murder of Edwards, nor with the murder of Tuami, because the Milwaukee County District Attorney only brought charges where murder could be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. On January 13, 1992, Dahmer pleaded guilty but insane to 15 counts of murder. Trial began on January 30, 1992, and lasted two weeks. On February 14th, both counsels delivered their closing arguments, and on February 15th, the court ruled Dahmer to be sane. Dahmer was sentenced to life imprisonment plus 10 years, with the remaining 13 counts carrying a mandatory sentence of life imprisonment plus 70 years. The death penalty was not an option for Judge Graham to consider at the penalty phase as Wisconsin had abolished capital punishment in 1853. Three months after conviction in Milwaukee, he was extradited to Ohio to be tried for the murder of Stephen Hicks. In a court hearing lasting only 45 minutes, Dahmer again pleaded guilty and was sentenced to a 16th term of imprisonment on May 1, 1992. Upon sentencing, Dahmer was transferred to the Columbia Correctional Institution. For the first year, he was placed in solitary confinement due to the concerns for his physical safety should he come in contact with fellow inmates. After that year, he was transferred to a less secure unit and assigned a two-hour-a-day work detail cleaning the toilet block. Dahmer became a Christian and got baptized in the prison whirlpool. July 1994, a fellow inmate attempted to slash Dahmer's throat with a razor blade embedded in a toothbrush. He was not seriously hurt, but Dahmer was said to have been ready to die. The morning of November 28, 1994, Dahmer left his cell to conduct his assigned work detail. Accompanying him were two fellow inmates, Jesse Anderson and Christopher Scarver. The three were left unsupervised in the showers for about 20 minutes. At around 8.10 a.m., Dahmer was discovered on the floor of the bathroom, suffering from extreme head and face wounds. He had been severely hit on the head and face with a 20-inch metal bar. His head also repeatedly struck against the wall. He was rushed to the hospital and pronounced dead one hour later. Anderson had also been beaten with the same metal bar and died two days later. Scarver was serving a life sentence for murder committed in 1990. He informed authorities he had first attacked Dahmer with the metal bar as he was cleaning a staff locker room, before attacking Anderson as he was cleaning an inmate locker room. According to Scarver, Dahmer did not yell or make any noise as he was attacked. Immediately after attacking both men, Scarver, who was thought to be schizophrenic, returned to his cell and informed a prison guard and said, I quote, God told me to do it. Jesse Anderson and Jeffrey Dahmer are dead. 
Scarver said he did not plan the attack in advance, although he later divulged to investigators that he had concealed the 20-inch iron bar used to kill both men in his clothing shortly before the killing. On May 15, 1995, Scarver was sentenced to two additional terms of life imprisonment for the murders. Scarver later stated that the murders had resulted from a confrontation in which one of the two men had poked him in the back. He claimed that the two had laughed at him when he had turned around. In response, before Dahmer and Anderson walked to separate rooms with Scarver following Dahmer. Scarver says immediately before murdering Dahmer, he cornered him and presented a newspaper showing him his crimes and asking him if they were true. He stated that Dahmer would taunt prison employees and fellow inmates by shaping food into imitations of severed limbs complete with ketchup for blood, and that the prison staff, knowing of Scarver's hatred towards Dahmer, had left them alone on purpose so that he would kill him. Scarver said he was hated so much that he always needed at least one guard by him at all times. September 1995, Dahmer was cremated and given to his mom and dad. The apartments where Dahmer murdered his victims have been demolished. Joyce died of cancer in November 2000 and attempted suicide prior to her death. And David, which is Dahmer's younger brother, has changed his surname.